Hello everyone. I wanted to do a video today about a concept in storage tech that I consider to be criminally underrated. That is the concept of variable sorting. But to understand what variable sorting is, we need to first understand what's currently happening at main storages to understand how it can be useful. So by now, the set-based parallel unloader designed by Glotz, RAFQ, Rapscallion, and Boyan has definitely become, I, I guess, what you consider the meta for storages being built today. The reason it's considered meta is uh, because it's just a very simple, uh, I know it looks complicated, but it's at least conceptually simple device that you can throw onto a storage and pretty much directly upgrade it in terms of uh, speed. Um, I see a lot of people who don't exactly understand how it works. So what I'll go ahead and do here is uh, input a box of emeralds. Um, now this box, we're going to do some brief checks um, just to make sure it's compatible. And eventually we are going to map emeralds to a set here. Um, once that has been done, we can then start unloading emeralds um, from the box. Of course, I don't have a carpet roll set to open the box, but um, you can see down here that we are unloading emerald. If I input another box of the same item type, we will check it against our set. Um, you'll see here that it will be detected as the same item type. So that detection says it's the same item type. And so now we aren't going to send that one into the unloading array. Um, if that had been any other item type that didn't match it, um, we would have sent it to the unloading array. Um, so what this means is you can sort up to 16 different item types, uh, each at hopper speed uh, in parallel. For this video, I picked Krebs main storage system, which you can find archived in the storage tech discord. Um, you'll also find links to everyone I mentioned down below. Um, the way this storage works is conceptually identical to the way most storages are being built these days. So I picked it as a good example of quote unquote the meta, um, but more commonly just what people are building. Now, the way this storage works is pretty simple. There are a few exceptions, obviously, and it's a little more complicated than what I'm going to lay out here. But the basic idea is you have all of these chests. Each chest has a filter attached to it, which we can see at the end of the, the hall here. Um, so, for example, this this filter for well, it's not mapped. Let's see this filter here for prismarine slabs uh, feeds into this chest. And each filter here can work independently, but they are limited to hopper speed um, per item type. So if the filter sorts prismarine slabs, you can only input hopper speed prismarine slabs. Of course, you could have multiple filters for the same item, but most people don't really want that. So uh, hopper speed per item type is a pretty fundamental limitation of a chest hall. You could use 2x filters, but you'd be drastically accelerating the hopper count and there's no real point. Um, now, the, the thing that complicates this whole um, system is when we get into the bulk haul, because the bulk haul of Krebs main storage does not actually uh, filter items in the same way. It sorts full boxes. Um, that's what these box sorters do. Um, this is, of course, a dummy slot. But for example, that slice, whichever one I clicked on, sorts full boxes of pumpkins into the silo and the player can grab them from the bottom. Now, because we're limited to that same uh, same unloading concept uh, for all the items, we don't have some bypass for bulk. We are also limited to hopper speed per item type to produce these full boxes. So these box loaders up here designed by Leo, um, command Leo that is, only work at hopper speed per item type. And that's fast enough. But it is fairly slow, and we also have to have a box loader for every single bulk item we want to sort. Um, and as you can see, it's a sizable array here, and this is a fairly small bulk haul. Uh, people will build quad bulks as long as this, so that's double the amount of item types, double the amount of box uh, loaders. Um, you can see how this problem gets big fast. And at hopper speed per item type, which is, I think most people agree, is fairly slow, um, it's definitely not as fast as I think what people would consider like ideal. Um, we're running into some limitations here. However, that limitation of hopper speed per item type is only fundamental to the storage because of the 
sorting power we chose. It's not fundamental to the bull call at all. The, the bull call can technically sort at 17,028x hopper speed by sorting full boxes at 8 game tick. Um, yeah, the, the, the sorting speed of our bull call is much, much faster than our loaders can produce. Of course, you're not really going to get 17,000x sorting power anywhere, but we can get much faster than hopper speed per item type if we decide to choose a different sorting method. Now, some of the more experienced storage techians, we'll say, uh, may have immediately thought of concrete factories uh, when I mentioned variable sorting. And the reason for this is quite simple. Um, variable sorting has been the meta at concrete factories for a very long time. Um, to understand why, let's look at the rates of this concrete factory we're getting. So this little setup represents a, you know, I guess collection of a 108k concrete factory. Now, you may think to yourself, okay, with only 108k, that's 12x hopper speed, 12 filters, that's nothing, I can do that. Well, that's great until you realize that there are over 19, well, 19 including the dragon egg item types, uh, that can be duped at a concrete factory. And each of those can come in at 12x hopper speed. Um, so doing the math on that means you would need about 228 box loaders just to handle the outputs of a concrete factory. Um, that's a lot of box loaders. I don't think anyone wants to build that. The solution to this problem is to use a variable box loader array. Now that sounds complicated at first. I'll explain it. Um, this is one me and Hilesmaker made together with some very helpful contributions from people like Floppy Donkey. Um, now the basic concept is off the bat, we have these filters which have nothing in them. Um, now these filters can handle anything. So let's go ahead and get some concrete powder. And when we input, you know, just a fair amount of concrete in here, I'll input them in half stacks. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and take freeze. Um, you can see here that we now have mapped these filters to um, concrete powder. And what I'll go ahead and do is just permanently power this just for the sake of demonstration. Um, you'll understand why I did that in a bit. Um, but we are sifting those items down and these two filters are now mapped to uh, concrete powder. And you'll see they keep a little threshold here. Uh, grab some more items, you know, just simulate this being the uh, end of the concrete factory, and you can see it is loading <laughs> uh, more concrete into the boxes. Pretty simple stuff. Um, now, when we stop doing that, which I'll simulate by turning this off, no more items coming in, um, what we're going to do is start unmapping these filters, and um, when we're done with that, you can see here that we are taking the actual filter items themselves, putting them in the boxes here. We go ahead and eject them out, and we end up with a box that one of the slices broke because I just tiled this recently. And uh, what should have actually resulted in is boxes of one item type. Of course, you would run this for much longer to the point where it started producing full boxes. Um, but yeah, this uh, example here is tiled for a 108k concrete factory. This is all you'd need to build. If you wanted to sort the boxes at the end, you'd also need a box sorter. But even with a box sorter, this is much smaller than 228 uh, box loaders. Of course, you could half that number by um, using 2x loaders. But even with 2x or 6x loaders, you're talking about at least 100 loaders just to handle one farm that doesn't need a hundred loaders to handle its outputs. So you may think that we can just take our variable loader array and slap it onto our main storage. Um, in practice, that would not be great, but it would work. Um, it would help you get rid of a lot of the box loaders you need to build. However, there's always the edge case where the player inputs like one of every bulk item and the variable loader array does not have enough time to reset and you basically end up needing the same amount of box loaders except now they're bigger um so that sucks a little bit but more importantly there are just 
a lot of other issues with that concept. Um, and we're still only working at hopper speed per item type if we attach basically this to a glotz unloader. So for those reasons, it's not really viable to use an array like this at a main storage. Um, but that didn't stop people from trying similar things. The great Palapala one day thought to himself, what if I just took the mixed box itself and just stacked it on top of a variable filter? Of course, this isn't going to work in practice. Um, you need a different setup. But the concept's there. Just divide every unique item type in a box into its own box, and you will have basically gotten the effects of a variable loader without having to have um, so many slices. The output will be boxes of a single item type. This is the basic uh, foundation of the idea of the shulker box splitter. Um, this is the first sort of module that I think is practical for a main storage that was developed. Um, this is just one example of a variable sorter, and there's also some complications with the splitting terminology. But first I want to do a demonstration, and then I'm going to clarify a bunch of stuff. Um, so what this device does, and this is consistent of uh, eight two-wide tileable modules, um, if we input a box, um, we are going to input that box into one of the slices um, where we have a variable filter set up. Um, we load each item type into its box. And when we get a new item type out of the box, um, we break the box and start again. Um, pretty simple in concept. This one's completely filterless, as you can see. It uses a dueling hopper setup. I will link... There you can see it just happened. There you can see we, we detect that gap between item types. Um, it is a little loud, obviously. Um, so this dueling hopper uh, splitter was made by Obby, but the dueling hopper concept um, is best explained by, and I think invented by, but I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, uh, Optic or Mason Tick on YouTube. Obviously, both of them are linked below. Um, and now for a bunch of clarifications. So first of all, in common colloquial terms, this would be called a splitter. Technically, it should pretty much always be referred to as a Shulkerbox splitter, but no one does that. Splitting is anything that takes um, a bunch of mixed boxes, or even just one or whatever, and turns them into boxes of a single item type. Splitting does not mean Shulkerbox splitter, but Shulkerbox splitter is a form of splitting. There are other types of splitting um, or splitters, such as cyclical variable sorters and the ideal splitter, which has potentially an even more confusing name, but I will leave a link to those below. Not going over them in this video, you can research those on your own. Today, I just want to focus on the shulker box splitter because it is at least conceptually the simplest, uh, the simplest module. Now the splitter has just turned off. If we go ahead and take a look at the output, you can see we have boxes of a single item type. Um, each box is going to be typically less than full, although obviously if you put a full box of one item type, you're going to get that box right back out. But um, yeah, each box only has one item type. But there's actually a property we've already achieved now, um, and that property is that this array is dynamic. Um, so dynamic is a branch of variable sorting um, that means that you can have multiple modules assigned to the same task. What I mean by that is, let's see if I can find a box here. Um, we'll go ahead and do these red boxes. These are all taken from Hermitcraft item set. Um, if I input two of these, uh, obviously there's a bit of latency here. Input the first box, input the second. Um, right now we are sorting at 2x hopper speed. These first two modules are sorting at hopper speed, but they're both doing it in parallel. Um, we are dividing those contents at hopper speed and, um, yeah. What we can do is input as many modules as we have. Um, we can input items. If I just input a load of these boxes, we can fill up every module with the same item type and it sorts it. We're working at what is this, 5x now, 6x, 7x, we're gonna get to 8x here, and we could have as many modules as you want. Eight is plenty for the record. Um, that's really fast, actually. 8x hopper speed is super fast. 
Um, but there are some issues. I'll go ahead and tick warp here. And we're going to see... Whoa, let's go ahead and turn the tick warp off. Um, we're going to see the first sort of common issue. We have a lot of boxes of the same item type, and they're not full. Um, yeah, there's no linking of each module in the array. So if two boxes input have a, are going to give you a partial box of... Um, of these ender pearls or whatever item type, it is up to you to later merge them. Um, so let's get into merging. So a merging array is a design to combine partial boxes. So just for demonstration purposes here, I have a box that is more full than the other. This is donkey's merging array, um, floppy donkeys, which is very unique in that it only has three hoppers per slice. Most mergers have four. Um, I'm going to go ahead and input these boxes and it will first compare them. Obviously, this is my front end and then input them into the array. So long as everything goes to plan here. And as you can see, it's unloading the more empty box into the more full box, um, which is pretty nice. Now, like the splitting array, this can work at 8x hopper speed as well. Um, this will merge, um, you know, up to eight or I guess 16 different boxes, but um, it will produce be producing up to eight boxes. So with the splitting and the merging, you could theoretically have every one of those slices doing the same item type, uh, which would be really fast. Now here at the output here, you can see we have an empty box and a um, full box, or partially full box. Now, after enough cycles, the goal is to produce a full box. Um, if I input these again, let's say we got another box from our splitter. Go ahead and input these. Um, should get mapped here in a second. You can see that, um, well, you can do the math on this. We are going to get a full box of ender pearls. I'm going to go ahead and tick warp for just a little bit here. And yep, there we go. Now at the output here, we will have a full box of ender pearls. All right, so to store our partial boxes, we need to use something like this. This is a box search based temp. Um, so it's a temp storage, as I said, to store our boxes. So if we input one, it's probably best to just show how it works. Um, it will map a little variable filter here. Um, it will check for, obviously it's 16 stack compatible. It will check the silo here, which is our actual temp storage, if we have any matches. Um, obviously, this is completely empty right now, so there's no matches. And since that's the case, we are going to input our box into the silo. Go ahead and input another box of the same item type. So that would, you know, come out of the splitter at a later time. Um, we can go ahead and do the same thing. Now, of course, we will get a box coming out. And hey, that box is the same item type. So we did get a match. Um, because we got a match, we input or we get an output of two boxes of the same item type. Um, as you can see here, just got an advancement. Um, yeah. Um, now this temp storage is pretty slow. Um, it's always going to be slow when it's not encoded. Encoded is not the subject of this video, so yeah. Um, but you don't have to do this process that much, especially depending on um, what sorting method you use. If you use an ideal output splitting setup, such as ideal splitting, you will rarely have to use this. Um, only once or twice for sorting method, maybe maybe more than that, depending on how big your input is. But um, yeah, the, the reason this kind of sucks is because it, it gets very slow with um, having a lot of partial boxes. And over time, you're usually going to have a partial box of every single item type um, in bulk. So, um, yeah, it, it gets slow fairly fast, um, obviously depending on how many items you have in bulk. With encoded, you do get much faster temps though, um, and they actually get smaller too, so that's pretty cool. But that's not the subject of this video, um, that'll be in my next video hopefully, so we'll save that for a later date. So we only need a few other components to get a fully working setup. Um, this here is a little whitelister. It's pretty bad, to be honest. I just made it really quickly for the video. Um, so it's based on Nomo's uh, 
cart uh mis i guess you would call it categorizer um uh, for boxes but i just used the this cart setup as a whitelister um so if i input a bunch of boxes here it will sort them um based on information about the box so i guess we can see here it will check if the contents of the box match any of these chests so any items we put in the chests will um be flagged as bulk items um we will then go ahead and sort the boxes um, based on their contents and also their fill level, which is pretty cool. So these boxes here are flagged to go to the chest hall unloader. So these are items in the chest hall, not in the bulk hall. Um, this is to bulk. So this is full boxes of bulk items, and this is partial boxes of bulk items, which need to go to the temp storage. Um, so I've already explained what we're doing with these boxes. Um, those are the bulk items. But now we need to explain what we're gonna do with the chest hall items. And it's pretty simple. We're just gonna unload them. So this is a pretty simple um, parallel unloader um, just for split boxes. I'm actually going to do a little manipulation here. Um, this kind of works better if you unload it quicker. But you can see here, it sorts up to two X uh, hopper speed, only one X per item type. Um, the main logic here is designed by Floppy Donkey again. Now, um, you could have a more parallelized array. You could even use another Glotz unloader. Um, it would work with the fits, but, um, I don't think it really makes sense. Um, you're not going to have a lot of chest hall items and the boxes of chest hall items, um, are going to be more empty, um, just statistically speaking. So doing some complicated process like mapping everything to a set is probably not worth it compared to just unloading the boxes um, uh, at hopper speed or 2x hopper speed. So I think this is probably more power than anyone needs. Um, just based on item distribution, especially on technical servers, you get mostly bulk items. Um, you get a lot of bulk items and you get very few chest hall items with high variance. So I think it's worth just dealing with you know, 2x hopper speed if it means that there's less latency between boxes. It'll probably be faster overall. Um, if it's not faster, it's going to be a lot smaller and almost as fast. So I've gone ahead and pretty quickly here thrown everything together. Um, everything here is very hastily thrown together just for the purposes of this video. Um, there will be a world download for this video, but it will only have all of the, um, all of the components individually, not together. And, um, the reason is you would throw them together very differently in a main storage. You know, you wouldn't just have a giant wall like this. You would place each component um, where it made sense uh, based on the layout of your main storage. Um, but pretty simply here, we are going to have a, um, we have the splitter array here that goes into the whitelister. Um, if those are chest hall items, we send them to the chest hall and loader. If they are partial boxes of bulk items we send them to the temp storage if they're bulk we're done with them um, obviously in practice you would send those to your box sorting hall um, and if we get a match of our temp we send it to the merging array um, I have a little setup here to measure the output this is a actually pretty nice one hopper signal strength sorter by sergi um, i'll also link him in the description below and yeah with this now we can go ahead and test the sorting power of these items, um, which I'm going to get from Hermitcraft, I'll probably use impulses set because uh, filters, but <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and measure the speeds of this array versus uh, the variable. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, boxes of Hermitcraft items from impulse just because uh, filters. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and measure all of his stuff, how long it takes the variable array to sort versus the um, uh, fit array. And also keep in mind that this looks way bigger than this, but you also have to account for the many, many box loaders you need with a um, setup like this. Um, we'll go ahead and see which is faster.
Alrighty, so having reviewed the times for everything, our set based on loader um, took 54 minutes and our variable array took 72 minutes. Now, that is longer and I expected this, but it turns out it's actually not at all for the reason I thought. I expected the main bottleneck to actually be the temp storage. I expected searching through all the boxes to take longer than the benefits. Uh, I, I expected the processing time of that to just outweigh the actual um, parallelization, but it doesn't. And uh, the real bottleneck was actually our 2x unloader for all the chest hall items. Um, it only took about 34 minutes. Uh, let me double check the time, um, but yeah, less than half the time. Yeah, th it was 37, not 34. Um, 37 minutes uh, to handle all of the bulk items. And then the rest of that time was just getting through a bunch of just chunk chest haul items. Um, so we already beat the Glotz Unloader in a way, in a way, I mean, um, we did sort of handle bulk items faster. It, but what this suggests is for an array of that size of having like eight splitters, you actually need a um, more powerful chest haul handler to keep up. Probably 4x parallelization for the chest haul unloader would be good. So um, yeah, kind of interesting that the bottleneck was not what I expected. So even though our uh, setup did handle bulk items especially well, um, we can actually further optimize it. Um, what we can do instead of running all of our items through the slow temp storage to find matching uh, pairs, is we can just group items uh, together, um, just if they're the same item type. So you can see here the contents of these boxes. I'll go ahead and um, throw all of them in this pretty nice little module here. Um, some of them are getting stuck here, which is kind of funny. I guess this is <laughs> missing some uh, water if I can get those out. Um, and this will um, go ahead and produce um, groups of boxes. So it's probably going to miss that one, but um, you can see it sends us a group of one item type. Going to find, looks like it's finding pink right now. It's going to output those in a moment here. To make sure we give it enough time to reset. Um, yep, and then we'll go ahead and fish that one blue box out. Um, so, yeah, if you didn't mess up the input, um, you tend to get a pretty good group. Of course, you can get unlucky timings because this is meant to have live input and you can switch the toggle buffer at the wrong moment, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're just supposed to outpace the temp. Um, now, what you can do with these groups is rather than sending them in pairs, um, we can actually find a um, pair optimizer. Um, so this is one designed by, again, Hexatron and Catnip. Now, by the way, Hexatron also did the actual um, base of the box grouper here. It's a really nice box grouper. Um, so yeah, a lot of work from them. And um, now you can actually see this uh, sort of merging array has gotten a lot bigger. Of course, you wouldn't actually need a merging array this big for the setup we're doing today, but this might be useful if you have like eight splitters and you plan to merge all of the boxes. Um, so what we do is we take the output of a single group and put them in and it's going to auto generate um, basically optimal pairs um, of boxes for us and just find what um, would be the fastest way to merge those boxes. Um, it honestly could have its own video on that logic and um, I'm not going to go over that today, but here you can see it is uh, generating pairs here um, and it just finds the most optimal pair. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, again, kind of overkill, <laughs> but uh, it is a nice optimization. It, even if you don't use the pair optimizer, just box grouping in general is a pretty good idea. Results are in the large variable sorting array uh, shaved two minutes. 
Um, now, I did actually realize that my clock was half as fast as a second. Um, so these are the actual times. Of course, the ratio is the same, but overall, um, the variable sorting for the bulk obviously uh, actually, actually really outperformed the loading rig, which makes sense. Um, it wasn't eight times faster or anything, but it was a good 25% plus faster, right? Um, so even though we had less hopper speed power, we could assign more of that power to the same item, which counted for a lot. Um, now, of course, that's all under the assumption that you have a chest haul and loader that can handle the amount of variance you have. Um, I didn't make one for this video. It wouldn't be hard to. In fact, I think Optic one has one already, so I'll link that video too. Um, but yeah, so overall, um, varial sorting did outperform the unloading array. So in conclusion, um, should you build a variable sorting array at your main storage? Well, if you're up for it, it's probably worth it. It's going to be a little bit faster, um, a little bit less hoppers. Uh, but overall, I didn't really make this video saying, hey, you should do this other thing. I just wanted people to be aware that it's an option that I do think is objectively better. Um, I think the numbers certainly showed that. But overall, um, this video is more of an introduction and uh, sort of a step one into the next video I'm making, which is an introduction to encoded tech, but I didn't want to put variable sorting in the same video because it would be too long. Uh, but there's a little teaser for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.